programme itself is a totally different uh, framework programme for research and innovation than anyone that came before. Because on this occasion there were a number of issues that we wanted to tackle. We wanted first of all to reduce all the bureaucracy. So in other words to allow scientists and researchers to be able to apply without having to be constantly filling up forms. So the first thing that we did was we radically simplified the programme. Then we looked at the architecture of the programme and we said, OK, we'll have three pillars. The first pillar is all about supporting uh, excellence. So that means supporting the European Research Council, which is the Champions League, if you like, of research and science in Europe. So it's about basic fundamental research and funding that. The second pillar all about industrial leadership, so ensuring that we have greater synergies between industry and academia and getting more industries involved. And thirdly, tackling the societal challenges, whether it's you know, climate change or uh, food security or health, all these areas, energy security, that are of huge importance to Europe, but indeed to the world. So getting all of those to work together. Also Horizon 2020 is about helping small and medium sized companies because they're the backbone of the European economy and up to now very few of them wanted to be involved in the European programs because they found them too complicated. Mm. Now it's easier, much easier for them to apply, they get their money much faster, the rules are the same right across the whole program regardless of which area of the commission they're going to be dealing with. Well, indeed, in Greece, uh, we are launching um, the new financial instruments for innovative financial instruments together with the European Investment Fund and the European Investment Bank. And we started a fund uh, called a risk sharing finance facility some years ago, but it was mainly geared at very big companies and companies in the ICT industry mainly. Uh, then uh, we came under a lot of pressure from the smaller companies and medium sized companies who said, you know, at a time of budgetary crisis in Europe, there is no money available for us to get funding. So could you think of setting up a similar instrument for the smaller companies? So basically the European Investment Bank came on board with us, we worked together and we came up with a new instrument for the SMEs. Greece uh, has wonderfully rich basic fundamental science, virtually very close to the top of the class. It has, however, the same kinds of difficulties that quite a number of member states have, which is taking the results of that research and delivering them and commercialising them so that they create the kind of jobs that so many young people in Greece want today. And everywhere I've been in the world, whether it's been in China, in the United States or in different member states in Europe, I have found hugely um, uh, competent, able, bright uh, Greek scientists and researchers who are doing wonderful work with the support of the European Research Council grants, but they're doing it outside of Greece. And I certainly would like to see at least the 35 that are using ERC grants outside of Greece coming back. But I would also equally like to see more Greek researchers and scientists applying for more ERC grants. Well, if you look at the strengths that Greece has in ICT, in aeronautics, in shipping, in the oceans, uh, all of these areas, food, uh, health, that's what we're asking member states really to do, is we're asking the governments and regional authorities, look at your country, look at your region, what are the areas that you're really strong in? Well, then invest in that area because that's what you'll get the money for it, first of all. But secondly, it's how you're going to create competitiveness in your economy and out of competitiveness will come growth and jobs. So for me, I think that's very important. And also, uh, we will launch on the 9th of July this year uh, a, a huge programme for public-private partnerships. And this is where the public sector and the private sector come together. And here again, there are huge opportunities for Greece because it's in areas like health, it's in areas like aeronautics, uh, all of these areas of fuel cells, hydrogen, all of that area, that again, Greek researchers and scientists and small companies have been involved in. They need, as soon as the calls are published, 
they need to make sure that they come on board, that they put for forward proposals, that they get a team or a consortium together. There are lots of opportunities, but people need to focus. And the best place to start is with the national contact point here in Greece, who has all of the information, can help them along the way, and we're there as a commission to help. The really important thing for the new commission coming in is that the policy structure has already been agreed, has been adopted, not just in the commission, but with the Council of Ministers and with the European Parliament. So really the new commissioners coming in will be able to hit the ground running, get the work done immediately. Of course, how soon the commissioners are going to be ratified by the Parliament is going to be a question for the Parliament. But insofar as the services in the European Commission are concerned, those services are well geared to the transition. They now have the programme 2014 to 2020. They also have the budget agreed. So all of the uh, fundamental basic elements are there. And I can only speak from my experience working with the public service in Brussels. I have always found them to be a highly competent, able, and always at the top of their list of priorities is how can we help mm. member states to grow how can we create competitiveness and above all, how can we create jobs for young people? Mm -hmm.